looking to grow revenues, increase profitability, or obtain financing? If so, you came to the right place. Running a business is all about leadership. How do you become a better leader? Learn from the successful entrepreneurs and business owners how to lead your organization more effectively. That's why we created Leadership Live at 805, Talking Small Business, to help you succeed with your host, Andrew Frazier, business growth pro and CFO and founder of the Small Business Pro University. Every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're joined by experienced entrepreneurs and business owners who share their secrets to success via live stream. Also, every Friday morning, we release a new podcast episode. Either way, you will learn about developing your business leadership skills from our roster of highly performing guest experts. Leadership Live is one of the many valuable resources provided through the Small Business Pro University, empowering business owners to learn, profit, and grow. Find out more at sbprou.com. Good evening and welcome back to Leadership Live at 805 Talking Small Business. Happy New Year if I didn't catch you last week and looking forward to making this my best year ever and hopefully we can help make this your best year ever as well. Um, you know, of course, this year's off to a fast start. I think um, every year seems to speed up, but, um, you know, there's going to be challenges this year, but it really creates opportunities. So it's important to stay proactive, stay creative and stay flexible as an entrepreneur and small business owner. And you can really you know, take advantage of opportunities that you may not have otherwise. So um, just because there may be challenges and uncertainty, um, that can actually be very positive for you and your business. Um, given what's going on this year, um, we're going to really focus on helping you grow your revenues. Um, it's so important to be able to grow your company, be able to bring in enough money to, um, to be successful and to be able to build the organization that you want and make the type of money you need. So um, there's gonna be an extra emphasis on marketing and sales. And um, today, you know, we're gonna be focused on that as well. Very excited about our special guest this evening. And um, she's gonna talk to you about making it rain. Um, definitely, you know, that's important. These are important skills and, and she's, she's one of the best. So I think it will be a very valuable experience for you. Uh, feel free to comment, communicate, make it lively, and um, you know, we're going to have a great show. We're going to have a lot of fun. So we got Precious L. Williams um, here with us this evening, and she's the killer pitch master. So let me bring her on right now. Hey, Precious, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. How are you? Um. Excellent. I'm excellent. You know, definitely always look forward to Tuesday evenings and, you know, Tuesday evening hanging out with you. How much better can it be? So he said, on a Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, just, you know, as you know, we, we just like to chat, you know, talk through key things that could be helpful for entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, so, you know, always appreciate everybody tuning in and, you know, welcome to the show. If this is your first time, welcome for the first time or welcome back. And, you know, we're really going to talk about really making it rain and, um, you know, some of the ways that could be um, good as far as um, things people can learn about how to do that more effectively. Um, we've got uh, Karen saying, what's up? Hey, Karen, welcome. And, um, you know, so... A lot of people know you, but not everybody does. So why don't we just take a minute and let you just sort of introduce yourself a little bit and then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Precious Williams and I'm the proud founder and CEO of Perfect Pitches by Precious. And they call me the killer pitch master, AKA the pitch queen, because I help you what slay all competition. And so after becoming a 13-time National Elevator Pitch Champion, I created Perfect Pitches by Precious to teach the world, especially women, 
women how to win pitch competitions, how to pitch to investors, how to get, gain investor dollars, how to create the type of elevator pitch that has people like shocked and awed and wanting to work with you. And if you're a speaker, a lot of speakers all speak for free and I teach you how to <clears throat> what's that, make it rain like snow. But it all comes back to the pitch. So how do you captivate and titillate in a very short period of time? How do you stand out in a crowded marketplace? And how do you teach your network to see what you're doing? And when opportunities arise, they're pitching you for profit. And so as a woman who grew up in the inner city of St. Louis, Missouri, I'm still kind of stunned at where I am. But I've been speaking professionally since I was 16 years old. So as a killer pitch master, I'm also an international professional speaker, a top Fortune 500 corporate sales trainer, a four-time number one best-selling author of books on pitching, uh, a dynamic media personality. And right now I'm being featured on Fox Business's show, America's Real Deal, where we've taken 16 companies from around the nation and there will only be one winner. So I'm the pitch trainer and the co-host for that. And quite simply, your perceived flaws are really your secret weapon. And we spend so much time trying to act and sound the way society tells us to do. And I want you to actually be the best version of you. You will truly stand out. And I'll help you create the pitch that will dominate your niche. So I am Precious Williams, proud founder and CEO, Perfect Pitches by Precious. And I am here to show you how to what? Make it rain like snow. All right. So definitely we're going to talk a little bit more about making it rain and really just you know, how you can be more effective in building your business. So before we do that, um, you know, want to share a few things that are going on. i um, very excited. Two real big initiatives. You know, one, any of you have been to my Power Breakfast and Conference. Um, next one, the first one of 2023 is coming up next Friday in um, Roselle Park. So hopefully you can join us. Um, and then also, I'm going to be sharing information about a new community that we're launching for entrepreneurs and business owners just like you to really help you get the connections, access to resources, and, and learn key things that will help you with your business. So I'll be showing you a little bit more about that as well. Um, not sure what's Are you up seeing before. what's on LinkedIn? Are you seeing it's popping well, on LinkedIn? I, actually, I was going to say my feed's not going through to... Uh, I, I, my I don't know, yard. but I'm, I have but, linked in on another window and they own yeah. there. So they we've got, up. yep. So you got Angel Angels on there, Anita, um, Renee Cunningham, Nika, Christian, Brittany, uh, Marsha, uh, Brittany again, Dr. Mecca, um, and Anita, Renee Cunningham, Leon. Leon. Um, so, we got, we got, um, great. So keep posting. Um, we can see you. Over keep, there. Definitely keep posting. And we just want to welcome you all. Uh, you know, I think it's important that when we talk about making it rain and Andrew, I know Andrew's going to start firing off on questions, but it, you want people to come and view what you're doing. So you have to know how to captivate and titillate and teach people how to really see you as the only choice that matters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, so definitely, um, Definitely keep commenting. We'll try if and if you have questions, Precious is here. Take advantage of the opportunity to to ask her any questions or anything you want to chat about. Before I dig into making it rain, let me just share a quick video about what the upcoming event is, and then we'll we'll um, get into it. So let's see what we got. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, so actually, that showed a little bit about the breakfast, but also it showed some of our key things from last year. But let me, um, so, but back with Precious, we'll go, we'll go a little further. So Precious, 
when we talk about making it rain, you know, of course, you you see that in different places and it may mean different <laughs> things. What does yeah. that mean to you? And what is it that you're helping people to do when you're helping them learn how to make it rain? Well, when I I always prepare for a career in law. So, yes, I used to watch the old black and white Perry Masons and the colored Perry Masons, Matlock, L.A. Law, all those guys, and law and order. And as I was going through my, you know, I graduated from Spelman College, went off to Georgetown University Law Center and then graduated from Rutgers School of Law in 2007. So my first uh, my first uh, my first position was at a very prestigious law firm. And I heard the term rainmaker, but I had no idea what it meant. And yes, I know John Grisham wrote a book called The Rainmaker and all that, but I didn't I didn't ever have an idea. And yes, I understood that we had partners with a managing partner, but no one ever explained what the rainmaker actually does. And because I was just grown to an attorney over time, when I left to start my first company, I had to get really good at sales. And so my way of getting really great at sales was through the art of pitching when I started my first company, right? Left the law behind and start this company. Started pitching, took off in that way. And now I feel I truly understand I have a great number of clients and now being called back into the legal profession, rainmaking is simply being able to bring in the clients, to bring in the sales. And one of the things you learn about rainmaking is if you make the sales, you're an asset. So many people, especially when I was coming through, we were taught to be the worker bees. Well, I want y'all to be the queen bees because the worker bees will be easily replaced. It doesn't matter what school. You can go to Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Columbia. You can go to the top HBCUs. You can go to any schools. And we're bred to be the workers. We get the work done, but you can easily replace that with someone else. If you bring in sales, it's such a, it's such a great skill to have that if you're able to do it well, they will keep you because you're the one bringing in the money. And so when you think of rainmaking, when they say make it rain, that means that you're bringing money into a place, a business, a brand. And that alone is something that most people cannot do. It's like most people can't speak well publicly. Most people cannot make sales. They let everything get in the way. So they're like, well, if I just took my head down and I just do good work, that works. I was like, that never works. And when I started uh, Perfect Pitch, uh, Curvy Girls Lingerie, which led to Perfect Pitches by Precious, that's when I truly understood what wasn't taught in law school, what isn't taught to a lot of us as um, Black, Indigenous, people of color, Asian Pacific Islander, Lat Latino, Latin X, uh, differently abled. Uh, we're coming from a different vantage point where we're taught to just do the work. The work is good and the work will be there, but the person who brings in the clientele that can give that work is more important to the firm than the person who can draft the brief. One of the things I also knew about Rainmaker, now that I've been in business 10 years with Perfect Pitches by Precious, is because I have an entrepreneurial mind, I can now go into sale, work with sales teams in the biggest companies in the, in the world, just like I can go back into law firms and teach from a different perspective. As lawyers, you're you're either um, transactional or you're the litigator. But there's also something else that's missing. If you don't understand from day one how to start bringing in clients, how to build proper relationships, how to get people to put you up for opportunities. And that's why I said rainmaking 101 from day one is so important because it's needed by sales professionals. It's needed by, you know, account executives, financial services professionals, needed by attorneys. Let's say you're starting your solo practice. You need to know certain things. And when you're in these big firms, medium-sized firms or whatever, if you go in with the idea that he who makes the sales wins, he who brings in the clients is the big dog, then you'll be like the worker bees, average, random, and ordinary, and you can easily be replaced. So rainmaking is so important. And that's why I think it's so cool that I've gone the whole gamut from being from going into working at a big firm, clicking for a federal judge in the Southern District, working at a medical malpractice products liability and toxic tort firm. All I was ever taught was to do the great work that did not stop me from walking out of firms. It did not. Because I realized over time, this wasn't how I was best utilized. And so starting my own company and working my way through it 
that is why people could that's why people uh authors speakers entrepreneurs and big companies and foundations and nonprofits come to me because they realize that that's a talent most people do not have and yes you can be taught by sales professionals but someone who's been in a profession and then going to start their own company and been exceptional in all forms that is someone you want to be taught by because i'm still black on both sides y'all i know y'all see me i'm still black on both sides Still black, no Brazilian butt lift, no six pack abs. I do not look like the typical Hollywood person, but by the art of pitching, the art of being able to speak life over people's careers, their businesses and their dreams. And then them seeing in real time how I went up high before, shark tank and all that kind of stuff, fell on my face and then came back with a vengeance because I am the rainmaker and I can teach you how to be a rainmaker. And working with Andrew, I mean, this has been, this is just so beautiful. He just showed y'all about the power of breakfast and conference. When you're at these conferences, you need to have a rainmaker's mentality. Are you building relationships? Are you able to talk to different people, not just about what you do, but what makes you you? Because who you are is more important than what you do. And if I don't like you, it doesn't matter what you do. Too many of us are caught up in celebrity and looking at something. Nah, if they can break bread with you and they see that you have something that they do not have, you can shake the tables. You're not, you're not doing what everybody else is doing. You're so much more valuable because you have a different mind. And so when I say with rainmaking, I am a creative outsider and I work with those who want to work with creative outsiders who are not bound by the rules of the industry that can look at something from a different perspective and show our black, brown, Asian, Pacific Islanders, everyone how to truly be a rainmaker. But it starts with the mentality first, getting out of the worker bee mentality and into the queen bee mentality. So hope I answered your question. I know you got more for me. Okay. No, that, that was great. I mean, I think, you know, I'm always talking to business owners about, you know, what is your most important job? Because a lot of times business Ooh, you owners always do. think about what they should really be focused on. And it's really marketing and sales. So, I mean, right. you need to be the rainmaker for your organization. And um, so, and, you know, one of the challenges is so many people are out there trying to market and sell without any training or experience or skills and or how, even an audience right and and how well how successful are you going to be so you know it, it's important to you know become an expert and learn as much as you can um and precious is someone that that you could learn a lot from i've learned um valuable stuff from her as well so um as i have from you, <laughs> you know, i'm so. your client <laughs> so so yeah so definitely um you know i think that that's that's key so now you know there's a lot of different ways people talk about selling and everything but you know one of the things i like about what you do is rather than you trying to fit people into your system you help people figure out you know their system yep. and um you know and you know, how do you do that and, and why do you do that? Um, because that's not what a lot of people do when they're helping people in that space. I think one of the reasons why I don't operate like most people is because my grandmother spoke life into me and she saw that I had a gift for speaking. I never even noticed. But when I was young, she used to say, when you speak, everybody listens. And here I am thinking, well, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not da, da, da. She was like, no. Over time, the more I started speaking, the more I started seeing people in a whole, a totally, I don't know if the third eye just opened and I am able to see what people are afraid of. I'm able to hear what they're saying and what they're not saying. And in our society, it's almost like everyone wants to be like someone else and not themselves. And so way into my late thirties, I was somebody else. I was like, oh, I got to sound like her. I got to act like her. And when I went through the darkest time in my life, um, I heard my heavenly father say to me, your second chapter is going to be better than your first. But it had to come from me taking you out for two years. And in those two years, he was dialing into me who I am and who, whose I am, who I am. And then how do how do I unleash that on the world? Well, if I'm the messenger, I have to be the message, too. 
And so when I started to show people who I really am, that I'm funny and I change my hair like I change my underwear. It's an everyday occurrence. You never know how I'm going to show up, but that's part of my brand. If you want to slay all competition, you can't show up like everybody else, right? And so when I'm speaking to a prospect or a client, I'm hearing things they're not saying. And I also realize, and Andrew, I know you know this well about me. Too many of us are trying to do what everybody else is doing in the same industries. When I realized that one of the things that's so important is go where you're going to be celebrated, not tolerated. When you know, everyone wants to be a motivational speaker, everybody wants to be on these same stages. There are places you you're needed more than you will know. You are needed other places. And I have the gift of listening, understanding. That's why you're not being successful right here. You sound like everybody else. What you offer sounds like everybody else. You are better situated over here. It might be at an educational institution. It, it, it doesn't have to be the Harvard's and it doesn't even that. It could be that you need to be in trade organizations, speaking or training or coaching. And so our first reaction is, oh, well, let's go to the big place. Well, what if they're medium sized companies you need to be with or those who are not quite at a million dollars? Maybe they barely cracked a hundred, a hundred hundred thousand dollars but they're in particular industries that will absorb what you're saying and you're not fighting you're not throwing bows to get in the door and when i realized that i can get into corporate america and it wasn't because it wasn't difficult because i was very specific about going into tech and financial services i don't have degrees in any of that but though finance sales professionals often struggle with they have to do they're told it's a certain way or tech people they got all these big words in their head, but they can't bring it down to lay language. Like, how do you sell without selling, but still selling to a superior, right? Or how do you how do you captivate and titillate a new audience? You know, you know the audience, but what if y'all are going in a different direction? How do you do that? Will you bring in someone like me? Because I'm going to show you what you're missing because you don't think I'm not a group think person. So because as a creative outsider, I'm not bound by the rules of this person taught me to speak like this. This person taught me to create a program like this. No. And so at the end of the day, is that God given ability to know where people should be placing themselves. We only see what's in front of us. When you have someone like me, who's been in corporate America, who's been an attorney, who teaches and trains, who writes best-selling books on the subject, who can go on television, can get earned media, who can do all of these sort of things and still have a dynamic personality. I didn't know who I was really until my late 30s, into my 40s. And this is the time when people would tell you, I'm too old. No one cares about me. You need to look, sign, and act like this. You over the hill. I'm like, baby, I'm just getting started. Because I finally know who I am and I'm not looking like her or talking like her or, or him or, or, or them. Can you imagine what it's like to create your own lane and not just say it because some guru says it, but you did it. So you do not have to be the biggest to have influence and get that coin and make it right. You do not have to be the biggest. You don't have to take a picture with every celebrity under the sun. When you are the celebrity of your own brand, you become the king. You, you become the king and the rainmaker. And that's why I think teaching from the pitch queen's perspective and bringing all of me to the table as a world-class master communicator and working with Andrew and, and really like, y'all y'all don't know. I know he doesn't really talk about himself, but when I started working with Andrew, you know, I had fear because I, listen, I want to go higher. I don't necessarily know how. And it was because you know, maybe I was pricing myself wrong. And then we started getting it together. And then that allowed, I mean, you know, I have an agent, all these, all the things I never had before, but they were all attracted to me because I was going to a higher and higher and higher level. And is it an investment? Of course it is, but I'm worth it now. I don't eat ramen noodles like I used to or eat out of the garbage cans like I used to. They don't love me like they used to. They now really love me because I'm fully me. And I know when we hear authenticity and transparency, it still doesn't really hit. We say those words, but really showing up as you are, right? 
Like I, I showed up with one tooth in my mouth. I showed up at uh, I showed up at uh, pitch competitions with no money in my pocket. That's how bad I had to win, y'all. I had to win. I had to win. I had to be the rainmaker. So when my back is against the wall, I'm coming out swinging and I want you to come out the same way. We're in a pandemic, an economic downturn and social unrest. So Andrew puts on these power network and power breakfast and, and network and conference because the right people are always in the room. You're there with people who are hungry for what it is that you have to, to sell or build relationships. Like I was at, I was, I spoke at, at one of his um, power breakfasts. And then the second one, I was on a panel and I met a woman on that panel. And now we're going to start working together. Right. And she works for a big financial institution. Like these are things that happen. And it's not about it having to happen right then and there, because the key to rainmaking is your relationships. And we hear this all the time, y'all. But if you don't have relationships and everything is transactional, oh, she bought for me. So now, you know, it's just tit for tat versus, well, let's go and meet and just have coffee. And it don't have to be about business. I want you to like me. I want you to I want you to rock with me. I want to rock with you. How can we be of service to one another? But I can't do that unless we have chemistry. And rainmakers know when to say no. You may have the money. I'm not the right person for you. Okay, so so uh, you covered so many things. Oh, that, sorry. You, you, know, you, <laughs> you know, I've been writing on my paper like, man. <laughs> but I want to uh, make but, your job easy. I don't ever want to come on and have people like, I got to pull things out of precious. No, no, it's, it's great. It's great. You know, I mean, I think it's extremely valuable what you're sharing. Um, I've got the right video now, so I'm going to share what's Cut coming that video. Friday, and then then we'll come back. So uh, hopefully we'll see you there next week. Um, every everybody's invited. Um, actually, I put the info in the chat. So is there a virtual um, option just in case so they can't come, but they can watch? Is there is there a virtual option for them? There there is a virtual option. Okay. Um, it's going to come through my website and actually through through YouTube. So I'm going to live stream okay. the pieces as well. So definitely, if you're not in the area, it doesn't mean you can't participate. So great great point. So. Um, so now, Precious, you talked about a whole bunch of stuff, but I think you went over a few things kind of quick, so I want to just circle back on them, just so that people are fully getting what you're, what you're saying. Because, you know, first, you know, perspective is, is very important. Um, you know, you talked about how, you know, it's more valuable to be around people who don't have the same perspective as you and you can bring a new perspective to them to help them be more successful. You know, just like, um, you know, when you're talking to people, pe people see you different than you see yourself. Um, right. So, you know, that's key. Um, you know, I think one thing, thing that's made you great at what you do is you paid your dues. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You know, yes. don't, you know, so you don't want to underemphasize that, you know, it's not an overnight thing a lot of times. And I don't you know, think they know 10 to 15 years. Oh, now you're an <laughs> overnight success. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so definitely that. And I think the, you know, you can say whatever you want, but the, at the end of the day, you got to add value. 
And it's yep. about being able to communicate that value and understanding what the value it is that you bring and that people need. So I think that's one of the key ways that you connect with people. And you know, how do you figure out what people value? You know, how do you figure out you know what to communicate to people and, and what you think it is, you know, you know, do, do you know, is it research? You know, how does it come to you and um, what can other people do to sort of figure out how to add the most value for people they're looking to work with? Uh, so I think that's one of the dopest questions ever. So if I'm being, if I'm booked to speak at an event, right, you know, just not even just you know, being the keynote speaker, there are a lot of things that are asked in, in, ahead of time so that I understand who's in the room and not just the general makeup, not just the demographics, but the psychographics of the room. What, are, what, what, are, what is the event host wanting, wanting out of me? How can I over deliver a shock in a way that they're just not expecting, but adds to the flavor of what it is? So if I'm going in to speak, I, you know, it's not enough just to know the time, but like, what is the significance of where I, where, where am I placed in that? When I am, uh, when I'm doing corporate training, it's very similar to that. However, it's usually a longer timetable. When I when prospects reach out to me and um, I usually steer them into the direction of having a consultation with me. So I'm above the having to have discovery calls now when I do discovery calls, I really have paid my dues and I'm very laser focused in the consultations on where to steer someone so that they know even if they don't work with me, they're given uh, great tips on, you know, how to move forward, whether they work with me or not. And I'm also listening for chemistry. So there's usually homework involved because I want to know that you're as invested as I am. I think it's very important that when you're going to speak before people or you're launching a program that you have done research and thank God that the New York Public Library at 34th and Madison, I still know the, the business librarians. I'm looking over research. What are in some of these surveys? And that has informed me about the gaps in the marketplace too. That's how I learned that uh, plus size lingerie, as it was back then, you know, the reason why they were black and beige and white, because no one thought those those type of women would even want colors to eat. They were supposed to hide our bodies instead of showing it off. And I knew, hey, eh, nah, I think there's a gap here and, and exploiting it, but being able to back it up in business. Uh, Andrew, you talked about value. That is so important. But you also have to show you're the only person that you're the only person or entity that matters to solving that problem or the challenge that your market has or doesn't even know that they have right now. But, you know, it's going to. So as people are talking about COVID pandemic, inflation or whatever, there's still things that are going to come. And as visionaries, how do we how do we break through the noise of what's today and show what's coming tomorrow and that they will go with someone who's a guide? Someone who's been able to get things from point A to point B, who's hit rock bottom, bounce back. Uh, I, you decide and all these sort of things. So for me, it's research. For me, it's tapping the tea leaves. For me, it's also, you know, going to my network who are at cert certain companies and really asking those questions when we have 15, 20 minutes together, because that informs how will I approach a new audience. Or, you know, even with you, Andrew, you have such a uh, depth and breadth of knowledge about some of the places that I that I speak at and we talk about these sort of things. And so you have to have, you know, good counsel and you are one of my trusted counsel. I come to you with a lot of things and I probably sound crazy half the time and you, you know, you. But we get a plan together and we make moves is everything that I have ever done successful. No, but I'm someone who will keep trying. And eventually, if it doesn't work out, I'm on to something next. But trial and error still works too. And if you're afraid to try, you've already failed. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. So, um, you know, one of the things that, that's key is, um, you know, everybody can have, want to win, but, you know, you, you have to have more than just the want or the will to win. You have to have the will to prepare to win. Yes. And, preparing 
you know, doing research. So many times people skip that part and it's, it's so valuable. Uh, but sometimes they do it because they don't know or they don't really understand what it means to be research or how to research. So can you talk a little bit about kind of, you know, a little bit about what you do or what people should do in terms of research um, and what they're doing? Well, to be honest, y'all, when I started my first company, Curvy Girls Lingerie, in order for me to even enter pitch competitions, I had to have a business plan, which means that I had to get real research out of libraries. I did primary research. So I would go, I went to every lingerie store in Brooklyn, Manhattan and the Bronx, because I needed that 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 knowledge of what happens in search stores, whether it's the Victoria's Secrets or the hole in the wall. What's missing? What's there? What's the experience like? Was it like at La Perla or Agent Provocateur or Jornella Wolford or Madison Avenue versus I'm in Brooklyn at this uh, little boutique? Doing that, but also going into the service. That's why I said you have to make friends with business librarians because they have such a wealth of knowledge. In addition to that, Another form of research is, you know, investing in certain masterminds, you know, like, so you might have this great idea, but there'll be people who will question you to, to really fine tune, to clarify, so that when you're able to talk about this idea or this, this thing you want to launch, what are some of the things you might be missing? What are some of the, what are some of the blind spots that are missing, right? And then over time, you know, Perfect Pitches by Precious is 10 years old. This year, November 2023, it's 10 years old. Curvy Girls would have been 12 years old. You know what I mean? So there's a lot that I learned from failure, choosing the wrong business partner, um, allowing fear to dictate my decisions instead of being rational about things and also understanding that no business has made it perfectly. Not one. There will be mistakes you never hear about. There will be decisions that could have cost them the entire business. There could be regulations and things like that. And so for me, research is, you know, what you can, I mean, you can go to Google School of Research if you want to, but I think that being able to have solid research back behind a lot of the things that you do, having data, and sometimes my gut, like my gut got me into pitching. It wasn't because I knew how to do it, my first pitch got me on national television just because I, I mean, to have no money in my bank account and still space off with the producers of MSNBC and create a pitch on the spot that leads me to be in at Rockefeller Center on your business with JJ Randberg and walking away with five hundred thousand dollars when it's negative four hundred dollars in my bank account. That is an incredible story. But that's how much I believed in myself. And if we have people who look nothing like me that can do all these things in the world, so can I. OK, OK. And so, I'm held to a standard. I better know my stuff. Right. And and you hold yourself to a high standard. I do. Cute. So, um, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, developing your network or mm -hmm. your team, um, which is so important as a business owner, you know, having other sure. people to communicate with in your, in your industry um, that do similar things to you because, you know, they'll see things that, they can let you know about and you can let them know about. And that's really how you develop and um, are able to do. Um, and you know, research doesn't have to be scary. Um, you know, some research is, you know, research in the library and the books, but some research can just be out in the marketplace. You know, like you said, go visit the stores that are your competitors, see what you what they do well, what they don't do well understand how you can communicate why someone should choose you over them um, and you know talk to people and you know I think one thing we talk about is um, and you know it's important for me too is you're not your target market so you can't no. go on what <laughs> you think and what you like because that's not who you're trying that's not who you're trying to sell to. And work with so isn't it um, the, one of the hardest things to know like <laughs> i'm not selling to me um uh andrew let me just say this one thing dion flynn is on and he was the keynote at the bmw conference that i was at on september 1st 2022 dion you are so amazing i just want to say hello to you thank you for showing up for me i really 
really appreciate you being here. And, you know, we're going to say hi to Lee together. And I really want to thank everyone for being on here because if you do not have an audience, I don't care what you, I don't care if you create courses, book, if you have no one to sell to, if you have not been building relationships, it's not going to matter. I promise you it won't. So having people show up for you is important. And that's why I show up for Andrew. Andrew shows up for me. Andrew's not going to tell you that when we got on our first, um, we did our uh, first a half a day session, I was at his house and we were going through them numbers. He said, numbers doesn't have to be scary. I'm looking at him like, I don't know what these numbers going to tell me. I just want to know there's money in my bank account. <laughs> so he goes through all of this and he was like, and when it was over, he said, you don't have to be scared of numbers. You're doing fine. But I wouldn't look at my numbers because I was like, I don't know. I don't know how to read them. And so he is trusted counsel because he looked at things and he realized you're spending too much here in marketing and advertising, which is something I never even thought about because it wasn't like I'm paying for ads. That's not what it was. But, you know, there were certain things he looked at and he said, why are you spending this? Do you even know you're spending this over here? I'm like, no. <laughs> He's like, that's why you need someone checking over certain things because you came out of a dark place and you're afraid to look at numbers because maybe you think whatever he said, but you don't have to be afraid. He said, I got your back. I'm looking at what you, so we, you know, put together this plan. And every time you know, when we like the, the money comes in, I have to put it in, I put it in this thing so he can see it in real time, how the money's coming in. Where is it coming from? Is it from speaking? Is it from training? Is it from book sales? Is it from digital products? Is it from a launch or something? It's, and he knows. So he'll come to me like, and I'm like this. Well, I, I don't even have to come to you because you already know what your goals are. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but we work on them together. We work right. on them together. Like the two things that for this year, like I'm, I'm so confident how we're moving. And when I tell y'all nothing is wasted, when you talk about making it rain, y'all, I'm not an attorney anymore. And when my law school brought me back on December 1st to start, like I cried because I just was like, you know, I and while I was there I was teaching one else and two else, you know, how to, you know, how to introduce themselves, how to how to pitch when they're in their interviews, because we all know that a lot of firms may not be hiring interns. They might not be. So how do you still go into certain situations and have them looking at you anyway, seeing you heads and tails above others? But there were other um it was sponsored by um, bar associations and different firms. Because I am the way I am, I knew that as I'm talking to the one ills, some of these partners are listening to me because I was them, but I went in a different direction. And that's why I said being a creative outsider, they instantly saw what the entrepreneurial world had informed me about teaching these young people. And so now it blossomed into you know, rainmaking, it blossomed into academies, it blossomed into people reaching out to me to teach and train. I mean, I, you know, going to Toronto, going to all these places around, like I'm going to Austin, Texas this uh, weekend, you know, to speak at the power of your dreams. So all of this matters when you're a world-class master communicator and when you finally recognize that where you started is not where you're going to end. And if you have the right relationships, it'll take you so much further than money and connections will. I promise you, it all works out. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So talking about relationships and Ooh. talking about, um, you know, want to just share a little bit about something else that we're doing that um, could be beneficial. Uh, I encourage everybody to, you know, check out, uh, put together the Small Business Pro Network. Um, it's a place where entrepreneurs can go to learn, collaborate, and grow. Um, you know, it helps you to be able to engage in a great network, um, access events and resources, and gain useful knowledge um, for from a lot of business experts, including Precious. Um, you know, we have a lot of great um, content and, um, lessons as well as um, resources for you as a business owner. So, um, so, so what is this really, you know, what are we talking about? And I'm just going to take a sec to walk through it. So 
you know, we've got the um, homepage. So you, re you can register here on, um, you know, for the program, learn a little bit about it. And it's free for the base level. And, you know, when you register, you know, you have access to a lot of different resources and, and a lot of different people. So what does it look like when you join in? So when you join, you're coming in and um, what you're going to see is a, um, a homepage where you've got members, you've got different featured activities, upcoming events and schedules. So you'll know what's coming up every week with the live stream, as well as other events and activities for business owners. Um, you get to connect with members who, who are near you. Um, you know, currently we have about a hundred members, but we haven't really fully officially launched, but you know, before too long, I think we'll have over a thousand members. So it's going to be a great network where you can connect with like, like-minded people. Um, so encourage you to get in now it's free now and it's available. So all you have to do is, um, check out, um, www.sbpronetwork.com and, um, you know, come check us out. So, you know, want to take a second for that. Um, I'll put that in the chat as well, but, um, definitely very excited about that. And, and, um, Look forward to being able to have that as a resource to help a lot of people, um, not just here, but throughout the region and, and the country and, and even nationally. So, you know, we have Come on already, we already have people on it from from Africa, you know, from South Africa. So, um, you know, yeah. we're going to grow and come grow with us. We're all going to grow and be more successful this year. So um, so let me go back. Um, we have a question. And from Lorraine, and I figured, um, you know, she. Lorraine on her. Yep, Lorraine up in Boston. Yeah. So um, let's see if I can find this. Um, I had it. Okay. Um, so, but I remember it also. So let me just. Um, she wanted. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, you know, you did curvy girls. A lot of times, you know, you learn the most from when things didn't go as planned as opposed to thing, when things went as planned. So, you know, if you want to take a minute to kind of chat about <laughs> it, that would be great. So, Lorraine, good evening, Queen. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, there were several mistakes that I made. Um, <laughs> number one. I did not have a solid foundation for my business. So even though I'd done a lot of research and everything like that, it takes more than one person to run a, a retail business. It really does, right? So understanding inventory and things like that. <clears throat> so if I could have gone back in time, uh, I probably would have gotten a little bit more education on that. Number two, <clears throat> be careful of who you choose for, choose as a business partner because it, it, it can totally destroy your company. And uh, because I didn't do my due diligence, uh, you just hiring, just having friends is not good. It's just not good. You, you all may not be equally yoked or aligned. Number three, I would have trusted more in myself and some of the decisions that had to be made. And so I would have had to just drop certain things because they were not, they were not working. Uh, number five, I think, you know, really understand my, and really understand your business model. Really understand that, right? I'm great at speaking. I'm great at teaching and training. I'm great at pitching. But one of the hardest things is to realize your blind spots. And I didn't realize mine until it was too late. And, uh, number six or seven, whichever one I'm on. If you're going to bring in employees and things like that, really understand what hiring really means. How does that affect the bottom line? And if it's not your skill set, get help. Yes, I've been through programs, but there were certain things that I encountered because we grew so fast that 
the, the programs and everything that I was in weren't ready for the kind of questions that came up that I didn't know what to do. So those are the things. Be careful of who you're around. And as you start as you start having success, that's when things get really dangerous because people think that your success is their success. Or that you wouldn't be anywhere if it wasn't for such and such and such. When you had the vision, the dream, you're the one who had no money in your bank account and showed up at places and did things. And just because I know how to speak well on camera, I know how to train and teach. My radar for, I didn't have the spirit of discernment. I didn't have wisdom. So those were the biggest lessons, Lorraine. And... You know, so th those are key and you continue to learn. And um, <laughs> that's the great thing about being a business owner. I'm, I'm right. learning stuff all the time. Um, so, you know, so definitely that's key. Um, you know, one of the difficult things is an hour really goes fast, especially when we have such a great guest like you. You already <laughs> know. Come on, you already know. <laughs> so, um, so you know, we're coming up close, but love everybody's um, comments. You know, definitely keep them coming. Questions. Um, you know, definitely precious. You're sharing some some valuable stuff. Um, you know, one more question um, before we. You know, at the end, I, I want you to, you know, we covered like a million, a whole bunch of stuff, but, yeah. you know, at the end, I want you to sort of think about, you know, three things that people should take away from what we talked about tonight that they can implement immediately within your, their business. So, you know, when you're, but before we do that, um, you know, you covered, you know, some of the things that you that you've learned, um, you've worked with a lot of people. What what are the biggest things that they need to learn? You know, I've, I've coached and consulted with a lot of business owners, and you know, I start to see patterns of challenges. And one of the biggest <laughs> things is they don't know what their real their job is really supposed to be as a business builder and making it rain. Um, you know, with people making it rain, being able to sell and build relationships more effectively. Where, where do you see most of the challenges um, that people have um, when they're coming into you? The biggest challenge is they've created programs, courses, they've written books and they're not selling, right? They have paid a, a, a lot of money to work with different coaches and it hasn't turned into anything. So the first thing I noticed when they've paid a lot of money to work with different types of coaches and they haven't gotten a return on their investment. And I know it's not from a lack of them working. The biggest thing is they're just regurgitating what their coaches are saying. They're sounding like many versions of the gurus and they have not synthesized it into their own language or to their own way of interacting with the world, right? And so they need to break free of, I have to sound like, I have to look like, I have to portray all it is success that hasn't happened yet. It's also because you haven't done the due diligence in your craft. So surface stuff happens a lot. And so when you're surface about what you're putting out there, when you haven't built when you haven't built relationships, when you haven't asked for help, or you think just taking pictures or being with a particular coach is going to save you, it won't. So those that's what really comes up a lot. They do not know how to package, don't know how to position themselves, and dang, dang sure don't know how to pitch. So definitely, um, you know, understanding how to communicate and market and sell more effectively. Y'all um, notice how we both said the, say the same thing and there's a way he says it and the way I say it? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. And, um, but, you know, also, like you said, a lot of people may have paid a lot of money and haven't gotten the results they expected. And, you know, of course, everybody's going to do a little bit of that. You know, I've done that myself. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
you know, a lot of times, you know, you talked about discernment and, you know, when you're going to work with somebody, it's important to, you know, have discernment and be able to understand, you know, whether they're the right person, but also whether they even have the expertise that you need. And, you know, what are some of your rules of thumb when you're looking to, um, work with people and, and consider um, partnering with people? I consider what is my main challenge, top one to three challenges, uh, doing research on the person to see who they've worked with and everything, and then having a conversation. And here's a tip that often is forgotten. Speak to real clients of theirs. Don't just take people's word. Speak to real clients. Speak to real clients, but that's that's what I do. And also, Andrew, you outgrow people too. And that's what no one talks about. Sometimes you've been working with someone for a very long time and you realize that you need you need something else or that the clientele they usually serve is not the clientele you serve. And so you can be told to do certain things, but that doesn't work for the clientele that you have. And so when I had to put on my big girl panties and release others back to wherever, you know, back to their brilliance for a particular audience, having those conversations is difficult. But just like when you go from elementary to middle school to high school, there are different levels. And the same teacher that touched in kindergarten can't teach you at, at, in 12th grade. You are a you are a sports fan. The person who taught you in peewee is not the person teaching you in college. So you're going to change and grow. Your company's going to grow. You might be pulled in a totally different direction that you never would have thought. And that will require a different team. So. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, we're getting pretty close to the end, but, um, but you know, you've covered some great stuff. Um, you know, I think Lorana has a quick question. Does making it rain mean money pouring in? And, and you know, one thing that I would say to go along with it is, you know, I've talked to a lot of people and, you know, about marketing and sales. And, you know, it starts with your marketing because mm -hmm. the better you market, the easier it is to sell. And if you market well enough, you don't have to sell anymore. But, you know, in relationships, it builds over time. So it's it not, does. you know, it may may not rain tomorrow, but, um, you know. But I think you have to understand, like, you're playing the long game, right? And yeah. so what you see on social media is this short, quick game. Nobody's winning anything. And eventually the tide comes on. You really get to see who's winning and who's not. Who's on some BS and who's not. Um, Queen Lorana. Uh, making it rain to me doesn't mean all every day money's just pouring in because I don't know any entrepreneur that's ever happened to. I don't. When I say it's 10, 15 years into an overnight success story, I don't regret the time it took, especially I walked out of homelessness less than five years ago, and I'm so proud of where I am today. And for me to be in the spaces that I'm in with heavy hitters, and people who are getting up to bat, it's important that I I pay my dues. So making it rain, maybe I'm gonna tell you, some months we bowling, and y'all know the bit. Some months you sit over here like this, what the heck? What the heck just happened? That's the nature of business. But if you have the right relationships, they kick in at different points, and you know it could be two months. You know sales is whatever. Then that then that third month, bam! All your seeds that you put out. Bam, Versus the person who was like, when the first month happens, oh, nothing's happening. It doesn't look like social media. I'm not on my yacht. Baby, baby, no. Don't don't believe the hype. Making it rain is a long game. It is a marathon. It is not a sprint. And sometimes when it happens too quickly, you do not have a foundation to sustain it. And that's what happened with me at with Curvy Girls Lingerie. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say I learned that valuable lesson. What starts fast, if you cannot sustain it, you will fail. But I learned valuable lessons. So even with that mistake, it's a beautiful lesson. And look at Perfect Pitches is 10 years old this year. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, I mean, there's so many things that we can we can go into. 
Uh, but you know, you've, you've definitely proven yourself over, um, you know, the long term, and um, you know that that's important. Uh, like you said, um, you know, a lot of you, you know, you can get lucky, but it's better to be good um, over the long term. So, um, so definitely uh, appreciate you being here, precious tonight. You know, what are the three things that you want people to take away? Um, from what we discussed tonight. Number one, start building authentic relationships with those you really want support and guidance from. And ultimately that will lead to sales and opportunities. Number two, gain clarity over what, why are you the only choice that matters for what it is that you do? So yeah, you can study the competition, but what is what is so special about you that even in the sea of everybody else, you are the only choice that matters. Number three, make sure that you are investing in yourself and checking in with others. They could be high school, college, other schools, volunteer opportunities. You're always building these relationships and they always kick in at different points. So keep planting seeds as you develop and grow as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, build authentic relationships, check in with others, let them know when you want to drop something, how can they help you and assist you and gain clarity on why are you truly the only choice that matters for that particular problem. So niche down. You're not for everybody and neither am I. So those are my three. All right. So authentic re relationships. So, you know, building relationships on value, mm -hmm. um, your value proposition, you know, understanding it. Um, sometimes it's hard to understand it. So, you know, a lot of research. times I research, but also ask your clients why they hire you. You know, they, they know. They had a great one. <laughs> they know, and, and they know better than you. So um, definitely that that's a great thing. And, and checking in or follow up. You know, if you follow up, that's half the battle because. Play it again, but know. it peeps in the back. Yep. So, um, so, yeah, this has been tremendous. Thank you once again. Always a pleasure. Um, you know, we'll definitely have to have you back as a guest again. And, um you know, appreciate it. So I'm going to close things out, but just hang on for a minute and, um, you know, we'll go from there. So, you know, once again, um, had a great session on with Precious Williams and, and plus thank you guys all for such great comments, questions, feedback, you know, that's what it's all about. We, you know, we try and make this a valuable opportunity for you. Um, as a business owner, my goal is to really, um, you know, empower business owners to be more successful, especially this year um, in general. So we're going to focus on helping you to grow, um, you know, build your revenues and um, be able to make more money because, you know, that's important for small business owners. So um, we have Precious this evening. Next week, we're going to have Diane Ling and we're going to talk about how to become more resilient. Um you know, Precious talked about, you know, you have ups and downs, even when you've achieved a lot of success, you know, you have good months, you have bad months, but you always have to be resilient, especially as an entrepreneur and business owner. So, you know, what are some ways that you can be more resilient? So we're going to be talking about that next Tuesday. Um, look forward to, to you joining us. Um, also next um, Friday, is the power breakfast and conference so hopefully you can join us there as well um, either live or if you're not in the area join us on live stream and you can catch some of the sessions um, and you can find that actually here on my youtube channel small business pro university um, youtube channel and um you know other than that um you know definitely Appreciate you taking your time out of your busy, busy schedule. Um, we hope we added value to what you're doing. And always remember, at the end of the day, the more that you know, the faster and more successfully 
your business is going to grow. Thank you and good night. Thank you for listening to Leadership Live at 805, Talking Small Business. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Leadership Live is one of the many valuable resources provided through the Small Business Pro University, empowering business owners to learn, profit, and grow. Find out more at sbprou.com.